Scene four, take one, sound four, Apollo 17, astronaut Cernan. Bang. <laughs> Our total lunar state time is planned for 73 hours, which is uh, obviously a little more than three days, which is longer than any other flight has either planned or been on the, on the lunar surface. Uh, this includes three seven-hour EVAs, uh, plus or minus uh, around seven hours, depending upon how our oxygen and how our water consumables go while we're on the lunar surface itself. The first EVA uh, will be, for the most part, uh, uh, in and around the lunar module, where we uh, get the majority of our scientific equipment uh, deployed, our lunar ALSEP package uh, deployed. And of course, we have to unfold, unpack the lunar rover, and it's it's a very big housekeeping EVA where we have to get all of our equipment out of the descent stage of the uh, lunar module, uh, get the rover uh, in operational condition. We have to load the rover all up with all our tools and uh, and all these uh, all our radios and all the scientific gear, and then uh, spend uh, about the next uh, three hours, three to four hours on the uh, on the uh, ALSEP package, which is a scientific package, deploying it, setting up uh, the uh, a nuclear power generator which keeps it running and what have you. Uh, the last hour and a half or so will be uh, uh, strictly on field geology uh, in and around an area of about two kilometers or a little less than two miles from the lunar module. The second EVA will, uh, will be a seven hour EVA also and its primary purpose is to go to the furthest point uh, almost eight kilometers uh, away from the lunar module up against the base of uh, some very high mountains to the uh, to the uh, south and to the west, and over and above a uh, uh, a cliff that we think we can negotiate with the rover, that's some 300 feet high. Uh, this is a primary objective of that lunar module EV or that uh, EVA. And during this period of time, of course, we have some scientific uh, equipment which we still are in the process of deploying that has to be deployed at further distances uh, from the lunar module. Uh, EVA-3 again is seven hours. Uh, it's built around uh, going in the opposite direction to, uh, to uh, strictly work on geology, uh, uh, to go to an area where we think we can uncover some of the uh, uh, additional secrets, if you will, uh, some of the uh, different types of materials that are exposed uh, at the site of Taurus Littrow. Now, you've got to remember a great deal of this uh, seven hours on each EVA is uh, uh, is eaten up by what we call overhead. Uh, you have to get out of the lunar module, have to go through a loading process on the uh, lunar rover and get the new gear out. And when you come back in, you have to, again, uh, sort of do a great deal of housekeeping outside the lunar module uh, as, as uh, concerns your lunar uh, rover and uh, the other material you're going to be working with. The lunar rover, uh, I consider a, a must. Uh, for our mission. We can certainly accomplish a great deal without it, but we're going to be limited to just a few uh, kilometers distance from the lunar module. Uh, obviously won't be able to get to some of our major uh, geologic objectives uh, at the site of Taurus Littrow. Uh, as I say, we can accomplish a lot, but not nearly what we can accomplish uh, if we do have the rover. Uh, we'll, we will be going uh, further than uh, away from the lunar module than any other flight uh, for no other reason but that the geologic requirements as such are there to go to these places to get the information. Uh, as compared to Apollo 14, which was the last flight without a, a lunar rover, uh, uh, the crew spent uh, several hours just walking to get to one major crater. And then they were got so tired walking uphill and uh, they got there, they accomplished their goal, but they had to uh, pass over many of their other goals because of the time consumed just walking from place to place. The lunar rover uh, is, is sort of a, an order of magnitude. It's a whole different world in terms of your capability to go places and get things done in a minimal amount of time. Henry Ford would have been proud, wouldn't he? <laughs> Besides that, it's a super little machine. <laughs> How about your, your television plans for this uh, mission? Are, uh, are they about the same as before? Uh, what are your plans? Well, we uh, we plan to uh, uh, to televise uh, the transposition and docking. That's after we leave Earth orbit uh, on our way to the moon. The trouble is, uh, being a night launch, that transposition and docking comes about one o'clock in the morning for most people, and uh, it's been seen before. Uh, we're doing it uh, from the standpoint of interest, and also, of course, uh, uh, 
uh, from the standpoint of engineering in case we have any problems. The majority and probably the most interesting uh, uh, part of our uh, televised activities are going to be on the lunar surface. Uh, and fortunately, it works out that uh, most of you who have an interest in the program, uh, who share the excitement uh, that we share and the accomplishments and the challenge and satisfaction of it all, don't have to stay up all night to watch it. Uh, I think uh, the EVAs turn out to be about 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, and run for seven hours uh, into the evening uh, for three consecutive days. Uh, the only problem, of course, one of them is on a Monday night, and I'm sure that the Monday night football game is going to give us a, a challenge for prime time. Let me just say that I think uh, every, every crew, uh, because of the way they get involved on it, feels a, a tremendous sense of responsibility. Well, because of the responsibility that's been 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 given them, uh, not just simply the opportunity, but uh, you know, it's it, it's a big thing when someone puts a spacecraft in your hands and uh, and puts a lot of faith in you to do a job that is not meaningful just on a small scale, but it's meaningful on a on a large, on a worldwide scale. Uh, uh, the responsibility, for instance, of uh, of Neil Armstrong uh, when he stepped on the surface of the moon was the responsibility he he had not just to himself but to his country. Uh, because the whole world was listening. And of course, that moment, that episode, that accomplishment uh, in itself probably meant as much uh, to this country, uh, certainly in de the last decade, than, uh, than anything else has, has, has meant in terms of pride and prestige and respect that he gained through the program, through his efforts, uh, not as certainly as an in individual, but he was put in that spot uh, than anything else that I can ever remember in my lifetime. Uh, and I think we all look at the flights that way. Uh, Apollo 17 uh, is no different. Uh, I personally look at it uh, from the standpoint of being commander of the flight as having a little bit of an extra responsibility because it's, uh, it's something that I cherish very deeply. It's a responsibility to Jack and it's a responsibility to Ron, but it's a responsibility to the people that had faith to give me this opportunity to do a job. Uh, one step further, I think, because Apollo 17 is the final uh, Apollo flight, uh, because the theme of our of our patch, the theme of our mission, is that uh, uh, this isn't the end. Uh, this is, you know, we've just begun to to crawl with the Apollo program as as mankind. Uh, uh, we're just now hoping and that we can learn to begin to walk and then press on to the future. And Apollo 17 is uh, is sort of an opportunity, I think, to remind not just our country but the world that this is a position that mankind is in today. Uh, it's not just the end. We're not uh, uh, putting our rockets in the barn and closing the doors. Uh, we're just beginning to uh, understand and accept the challenges uh, uh, that this universe has for us. And I'm not speaking in terms of way out. I'm thinking in terms of things that really affect you. Apollo 17 has that responsibility. I think it has. Uh, uh, we want to express a feeling to the people who made it possible uh, that they've done a great thing for this nation and for the world and uh, uh, let them know that it's not the end, but it truly is a beginning.